gorgeous day. It had been raining. It was nasty a couple of days ago, but it's cleared up very nicely. Temperatures in the 80s. And we are getting ready for UCF and Oklahoma. First regional in six years last year's for this UCF team. Now getting to the super regional. And Volpe getting ready to step into the box to face off against Trotwine. Elise Volpe, a junior from Scarborough, Ontario. That's in Canada. Also was uh, used to play softball at Bucknell, which is in Pennsylvania. Second year at UCF. Hitting 333 on the season, second best on the team behind Cody. Well, she led off the last 10 games in the 2021 season, and in that span, the team went 7-3. and three. This year has hit all over the lineup, but has started getting that lead-off spot because of the energy she's been able to bring at the top of the lineup. Shortens. And you see Volpe only listed at about 5-3. Was on the all-tournament team in the American as this team blasted through both the regular and tournament championships. They were picked to finish third in their league, and the, the players we talked to yesterday said they kind of have used that as fuel. They also were supposed to host the conference tournament, but when they when news got to the conference heads they they realized that they were going to be transferring out they will be in the big 12 soon and they took that opportunity away from this group trying to bunt on three and one that's right ucf will be exiting to go into the big 12. they accepted those invitations last year in september and in the league as you take a look at cindy ball malone their fourth year head coach after a successful run boise state Full count. So yeah, once the uh, conference got news that UCF was going to be leaving for the Big 12, they pulled the hosting honor for them, and uh, they're not too—they weren't too happy about it. But this is good revenge, right? You win—you win the regular and the tournament championship. Yeah, they were supposed to host in 2020, but that got pulled because of the uh, the COVID pandemic. That is hit right into the glove of. Jana Johns, that's a good at bat though. Volpe saw a lot of pitches. She did see a lot of pitches, but one thing that I was noticing in practice yesterday is the slappers, when they were taking their on the field BP, were trying to punch the ball over the, over the infield and into the grass. I think their only way to get on here today is to use the ground and throw the ball down hard into the dirt, get the ball to stay in the air. That's the only way they're gonna be ha have enough time to get down the line. That was a seven pitch at bat for Volpe. Here's Kennedy Searcy, the third baseman, sophomore from Jacksonville. One of many Knights who made it on the All-American Conference team, the AAC. It's a team that had to beat Michigan twice last weekend to win the region, which was played in Orlando. Cersei down 0 and 2. Taken outside, Jim Cooper behind the plate this afternoon. Terry Holt, first base ump. Tanya Garrig at second, and Brett Higgins at third, the four person umpiring crew here in the postseason. And now the 1 2. Trotwine's first strikeout of the day. The rise ball is something that UCF is going to need to show a ton of discipline on. Knowing that Trotwine loves to use the top of the zone, they have to stay off that pitch that starts belt high. It will continue to climb the ladder. It will simply be a swing and a miss pitch all day long for UCF. You have to stay off that pitch. Trotwine coming in with a ridiculous .42 earned run average. And now here's Jada Cody, we highlighted her in the open and for good reason. 
And while Cody is dominant, there's nobody on base, Pam, and that's the key to Cody's game. She can hit the long ball, but one run or solo shots are not going to do it in this game. They have to get people on for Cody. Leading her team in average home runs, RBI, doubles. Second in the entire nation with her 74 runs driven in. And just for context, that's more than Jocelyn Allo and even two more than Tiare Jennings. Tiare who leads OU in that department. And the only way to get those RBI is to have people on base. Right. And that's what Oklahoma is so good at. With a 369 batting average as a team, they are putting people in the position to score consistently. UCF needs the top of the lineup to be able to get on for Cody to be effective. Not the case right now. It's a one-two pitch. Trot line with that .42 ERA. That is first in the entire country. And among the gaudy numbers, they are first in the nation with a .81 earn run average as a staff. Well, she has just now hit the century mark in innings pitch. Came into the game with 99 and a third. So with those two outs, she now broaches the 100 innings. Another one, two on the way to Cody. Good discipline. That's what the rest of UCF needs to see is that discipline on the ball up in the zone. When you face a rise ball pitcher, if it starts belt high, go ahead and take it, especially if you have a strike to give, knowing that that ball is going to climb until you learn to read the spin and the movement of that pitch, especially the first time through the lineup, you need to show discipline on that rise ball. Sends it skyward, Talon Snow, the first baseman could not hang on as she was a, about to run into the webbing in front of the UCF dugout. Well, that was a miscue. Typically, Oklahoma very short up defensively, and that one just kicked off the heel of, of Snow's glove. Looks like it just bounced around in the web, didn't secure it. I don't know that she was concerned about the fence in foul territory, but it gives Jada Cody new life. And Jada Cody sends it deep to left field, but not deep enough. Rito squeezes it for the final out. Two spot Jocelyn Allo. And she was a, a simple six for seven in the regional with two home runs. I mean, so good. She's hitting 500 on the year. I don't know that there's enough superlatives to give about Jocelyn. 500. Ola. That means a hit every other official at bat. Yep. And she's also, she gets walked a ton. Her on-base percentage is 640. Her slugging percentage well over 1,000. She bats second. But first, Jada Coleman. First team all Big 12. Last year was one of three finalists for National Freshman of the Year that went to her teammate Jennings. And Jada Coleman, the, di the difference between her this year and last year is this year her emotions are in check. She leads off because she fires up the rest of the team and she's feeling the flow of the game so much better this season and able to lead off very efficiently. And you hear the fans already in good voice. One one pitch. We had an opportunity to talk to Mancha yesterday, and both she and uh, Kama Woodall, who was their co-ace, if you will, they said they were looking forward to this matchup, taking on this Oklahoma team. And Mancha is actually the reason that coach, head coach Cindy Ball Malone went back to the bullpen. Last year, the head coach was trying to navigate everything, leading the defense, leading the offense, helping the pitchers. And Mancha said, look, I came to UCF because I wanted to spend time with you and I need you in the bullpen. Coach Cindy Ball Malone listened, has put herself back in the bullpen, and this pitching staff has definitely reaped the benefits. That is sent into center field where it will plunk down for the first hit of the game. Now, 
off the bat, you know that Jada Coleman was not happy with the kind of contact she put on this ball, got jammed up on a ball up in the zone, just didn't get enough barrel to it. But because of that, it's able to fall in for a really nice base hit into center field. The outfield playing deep, knowing the power of this Oklahoma offense. And here is the most powerful of them all, Jocelyn Allo, who earlier this season in mid-March broke Lauren Chamberlain, former OU Sooner herself, her all-time NCAA home run record. Allo first pitch swinging, sends it to the second baseman Molina, and then it gets away. Allo takes second, a wide turn at third. And Coleman is able to score all the way. They get Allo out at second on the back end of it, but the error leads to Oklahoma's first run. And you gotta love aggressive base running, but in this situation, it was a late stop call by Patty Gasso over at third base that allowed this one to score a run, but also get Allo out. A throw through Justine Molina at short, trickled all the way over to Maddie Bejarano out in left. At the beginning, Jada Coleman got hung up, but fast enough to advance. Allo not able to get back to get the hand in. So one out, but one run crosses on that play. So Allo singles, but because she was thrown out at second, the bases are clear now. The error goes to the second baseman, the E4 sent Allo. So scored it as a 7-5-6 on the putout, and the run scores. And needless to say, UCF needs to play clean softball. Well, and you know that the nerves are running. You're in a huge environment with a ton of fans and in, in a place that you're not familiar. And it was really funny, actually, to hear this UCF team walk into the stadium yesterday. One of the comments we heard was, I can't believe I'm breathing Patty Gasso's air. <laughs> <laughs> and they were wondering if, if Coach's car was, if they were looking at Coach, at Coach Gasso's car, it was really like starstruck kids coming into this environment. But these women deserve to be here. They ran through their regional, the first time ever hosting at home in Orlando. Able to make it to their very first Super Regional because of that 16 seed. They face the number one Oklahoma Sooners. And when we talked to Coach Cindy Ball Malone about that matchup, would you have played this season differently? Would you have rather finished maybe 17 and gone to a different regional to face a different opponent in Super Regionals? She said, no, our goal was to host regionals. Our goal was to make it to Supers. And that's exactly what we've done. And their reward for that is taking on Oklahoma. Jennings takes a pitch inside to fill up the count. Jennings hit a ridiculous 462 last year as a freshman. Sky high, but playable for Molina at second for the second out. And whenever you make an error, you know the next hit is going to find you. So a good recovery by Macario over there at second base to reel in the second out of the inning and to probably calm down those nerves just a little bit after a miscue in the last at bat. Now the bases are empty with two away. Grace Lyons, unanimous first team, all big 12 selection, having her best year at the plate this season, hitting over 400. And hitting that one on a rope to left field, but chased down nicely to end the inning. But an unearned run comes in. Oklahoma up early, 1-0. Peirano will be batting third in this inning, but first, Shannon Doherty leading things off against Trotwine. Doherty sends it right into the glove of the third baseman, Johns, for the first out of the second inning. Now, 
DP Ashley Griffin is a true freshman from Georgia, unanimous all-rookie selection. Hitting 289 on the season. First pitch swinging. And Griffin, a really cool recruiting story. She is so tough. And when Coach Cindy Ball Malone was out recruiting, she hit a ball into her shin, didn't miss a beat, stepped right back into the box, hit a double in her in that at bat. And the very next at bat, hit a home run. And Coach said, that's a kid I want on my team. Talk about tough. Ball received outside behind the plate. Lindsey Elam, the veteran catcher, doing the vast majority of the catching because Kinsey Hansen is banged up for the Sooners. Yeah, she's been out with a knee knee injury, also tweaked her ankle. So Lindsey Elam back behind the dish again after a little bit of a of a break back there. That is just foul. And back behind the dish, Lindsay Elam, coach Patty Gasso calls her the field general. She's filled the shoes. Of, she filled the shoes of Leah Wodak. Her freshman season came in having to just hold on for a wild ride with some veteran pitchers in the circle. Now a red shirt senior able to be a great leader behind the plate. Well, one of those seniors taking advantage of the extra year. And you're seeing Trotwine just try to extend the zone right now and figure out where she can get the call. I love that hold by Elam. Very quiet receive, holds the placement, doesn't try to bring it back and sell it too much, but gives the home plate umpire a longer look. Full count is fouled back. One of your jobs as a catcher back behind the dish is to earn the trust of an umpire. So if a pitcher is throwing a spot consistently and you continually hold that, you can sell that pitch to an umpire, showing control and showing the ability to pinpoint spots. Well, out of the zone, Griffin draws the first out walk, the first base runner. And we talked about De Hirano, and here she is talking about her beloved brother, Tanner. I just tweeted out there to get him here, and I wasn't thinking anything of it. And Jan and Britt actually are the ones that got the ball rolling, and they just are amazing people. I mean, Britt, she has Down syndrome, and her and I started to connect just because of my brother, and they're great people, and they just really hit me, hit me, hit me. put the story out there, and the UCF community just really took over, and it's just so amazing to know that we have family like this that will protect the UCF community like that. Pretty cool to see that connection between brother and sister. And when coach Cindy Balmalone talked about Bejarano, she says, you know what, that's my girl. The tag and then the double play executed beautifully. Jennings heads up. Tag Griffin on her way to second. Conley threw it over to first to end the inning. They've been to the World Series, the gold accentuating the times that Oklahoma won it, including last season. Starting off the second inning, Lindsey Elam, the catcher, facing Gianna Mancha. Already talked about what a good catcher Lindsey Elam is, and it's a player that uh, Patty Gasso has a special affinity towards. In high school, Lindsay Elam's mother passed away. And from that moment on, Patty Gasso said, you know, I just felt this connection. She she came my de facto daughter, knowing that she needed that role filled. And so as soon as she stepped on campus, and actually even before she got to campus, Coach Gasso was reaching out to her to make sure she was OK and to be that motherly figure for her in that loss. The kid had to really go through a lot. And a happy birthday to Lindsay Elam at the plate. It's also Jana John's birthday. And? And the big cheese herself, <laughs> Patty Gasso. So three Sooners celebrating their birthdays today, and the best way to celebrate would be with a victory. It's amazing that she's 
turning 29 and has been yes. here for 28 seasons. She did amazing things as a <laughs> one-year-old. Well ahead of her time. With so many expectations for this Oklahoma team. They've been number one all season. Just the two losses. They lost to Texas in the regular season and then to Oklahoma State in the Big 12 tournament final in extra innings. And losses can be a positive thing, right? They definitely can. And when you talk to Coach Gasso about those losses, she said those came at very pivotal moments and gave us lessons that we needed to learn, especially before we got to the postseason. She said the not so good moments are 100% necessary. She said during the year, they got away with some pretty average games. They wanted challenges. But that loss to Texas, she said it was a really long bus ride home after that loss. But it was an important moment knowing that they needed to come back and get stronger and work harder. It refocused them, she said. And then that loss in the Big 12 tournament to Oklahoma State, she said our pitchers needed to learn how to trust the defense. Jordy Ball did not throw it all in that Big 12 tournament, and the pitchers started to press, and the defense got a little worried. She said in that moment, we needed to start taking a step back focusing on the work that we had done and trust each other, knowing that we didn't have to have Jordy Ball in the circle to win. Jordy Ball has been throwing some in the bullpen. Eighth pitch of this at bat on the way to Elam. Had another bullpen session this morning. Coach is optimistic that she will be able to use her in the postseason. Most definitely with an ERA below one. She has 21 wins on the season, just one loss. But she is dealing with a forearm injury right now, and they are hoping to have her back for the Women's College World Series if they advance past UCF. Lindsay Elam with a terrific at bat. Draws the leadoff walk here in the second inning. First free pass given up by Mancha. And one of the things about Oklahoma that is so dangerous, not just because they can hit the long ball and hit for average, but they're very patient hitters. They make you bring the ball into the zone. They will take their walks. And this team has definitely learned how to be patient, knowing that so many pitchers try to throw around them. But the question is, you throw around them and then look at the next person up. Yeah, there's no way to get out of it. Everyone in the lineup has at least one home run. Comes down to just putting good pitches in the right spot and changing velocity. You want to disrupt a hitter's timing, make them miss hit. The ball definitely has to move through the zone. A pitcher is throwing for speed, spot, and spin. All three of those need to be on point when you are throwing to Oklahoma. Oklahoma leading the nation in batting average runs, home runs, home runs per game, slugging percentage, and more. But first, we have to watch Alyssa Brito at the plate. Transfer from Oregon, playing in her first year in Norman. You see her numbers are right up there with everybody else. When she was a shortstop at Oregon, but coming into Oklahoma, that spot's pretty nailed down by a solid shortstop in Grace Lyons. So she's found another way to contribute. Rito starting in left field for the Sooners. She, she was not an everyday starter when she got to campus. She had to earn that spot, but her bat got hot, and Coach Gasso said, I needed to have that in the lineup. So she figured out a way to get her into the game defensively so she could have her bat in the lineup. Now Coach Gasso going to talk to Brito. Coach Gasso said yesterday that Brito has been clutching us up for us, so... And that's a good thing. Yes. <laughs> clutching good up. You're clutching up. Clutching up is a good thing because it means that she's come through in some really big situations. Sometimes that statement, clutching up, might be perceived as a negative, no. but, but definitely not coming out of the mouth of Patty Gasso. Women's College World Series is returning to Oklahoma City. Game one coming up Thursday, noon Eastern time. That's 11 o'clock Oklahoma City time. NCAA.com has all the information to get you up to date as... All the Super Regionals are going on today. So you 
catcher behind the plate, Jada Cody. And Jada, Jada was made into a catcher, wouldn't you say? To switch to, uh, to playing catcher now at UCF? Yeah, she's played all over the field, was a second baseman, but you'll also see her at third base and left field when she's not catching. So not only does she have a great bat, but defensively they use her all over the diamond. He's their best hitter and also pivotal now as a catcher. Brito sends that out of play. When we talked to Cody about moving back behind the plate, it was not a position that she was very comfortable with early in the season. We saw her down at the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational move back behind the dish kind of as a last resort. They were having a lot of miscues behind the plate. And when we asked her about it yesterday, she said, yeah, we realized after that tournament that I needed contacts. <laughs> <laughs> That's a base hit over the outstretched gl glove of Molina. Elam has to hold it first, but the Sooners have their first two on here in the second. And the thing that's so devastating about Oklahoma is, yes, they can hit the long ball, but they hit for average so effectively. As a team, they hit 369 as a team. And in this at bat, you're seeing a fabulous job of just letting a ball on the outside part of the plate, lets it go deep, hits it the other way, makes it look easy for a simple base hit. JT Gasso, the uh, hitting coach, one of Patty Gasso's sons on this staff. Doing a really good job with these hitters. Now, Talon Snow transferred over from Auburn a couple of years ago. Running a home at first base. Did not get a hit in the regional last week. Well, and she's at first base because of Kinsey Hansen being out of the behind the plate. When, Can when Hansen is catching, you'll see Lindsey Elam at first base. But with that shift of Elam back behind the dish, it opens up a spot at first base for Talon Snow to slide in. I see Cody bounce up from behind the plate. Well, and you would think with the kind of power that Oklahoma has, their run game would be small, but these Sooners have 56 stolen bases on the year. So they put you as a defense in a tough situation with a lot of speed on the bases and chances for the long ball. The long ball always looming, but there's the short game. Snow hits it over to the shortstop, not in time. Brito uses her speed to load the bases. As a slapper, that's what you have to do. Let the ground do the work for you. Put the ball on the ground. And there, Taylor Snow uses it perfectly. Notice she's out of the box, but it doesn't get picked up by the home plate umpire. So she, there's no call there. And because of the speed at first base, able to beat it out, it loads the bases for the Sooners. As a slapper, you've got to use the ground. And Taylor Snow figures out how. So the bases are loaded here with nobody out. And that prompts a visit into the circle. Cindy Ball Malone, just the second head coach in the history of this UCF program, calls the pitches, was a two-time All-American pitcher herself, but now a little bit of a jam. Not just a little bit of a jam, you've got one of the six hitters with double-digit home runs coming up to the plate. Jana Johns, a transfer that came into Oklahoma back in 2021 from South Carolina, has big long ball potential and is able to push runs around just like the rest of the Sooner lineup. And by the way, that last play by Snow, that's a fielder's choice, not credited with a single. Janet John Johns now up with the bases loaded and nobody out. Johns takes the first pitch. That's a really good spot. I love that spot underneath the hands of Johns. That's a hard pitch to elevate. And in this situation, you definitely want a ground ball. And that would have been a ground ball to third base. You could have stepped on third and gone to first. Good spot, a little bit low. But now Johns knows that that can be called a strike.
Jones takes that for a strike. Another good spot. I mean, that's that's what you do in an, as a pitcher in and at bat. You try to extend the zone and come back to your best stuff. So while the rise ball out of the zone, definitely a waste pitch. They were trying to get Johns to swing and miss, try to play on her emotions. But Johns very controlled in the box, puts herself behind on two very similar pitches down under the hands. So the one two now, huge pitch from Mancha. It's out of the zone. Jones went for it and struck out. I tell you what, that right there, very good sequence for Gianna Mancha in the circle. Under the hands twice, up and away, and then a ball off the plate. Nice little curve ball down in the zone. Even if she got a piece of it, that would have been a nice double play ball. But because she was ahead in the count, able to take that one off the plate and get the swing and the miss for the first strikeout of the game. Yeah, what a time to get the first strikeout. And now Riley Boone, the number nine hitter. Hitting over 400 on the season. So the infield playing in, outfield shallow as well. Puts it on the ground, the play home. They get the fours for out number two. Good play over there at third by Cersei. Yeah, in a situation like that, you're infield, everybody in front of the baseline, hoping that she will try to just put a little small game, small ball into the game. And she does. Jada Cody plays it perfectly like a first baseman. Foot squarely in the middle of home plate to secure the out. No play at first because of the speed on the bases. And with two outs, that'll push your defense back. Everybody able to play straight up. So from bases loaded, nobody out. Now to two away, back to the top of the lineup. And Jada Coleman started things off. Singleton scored in the first inning. That is just into the Oklahoma dugout down the third baseline. And it might be important to get this out. Yeah, I would I would really make sure that this has an exclamation <laughs> point on it, knowing that Jocelyn Allo is my next batter, and I don't need to put the home run queen in the box with bases loaded. Coleman, no slouch herself. Hitting well over 400 on the season. Down a one. See, Oklahoma very uncharacteristic, 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position, including the last two batters. On well, NJ to Coleman's freshman campaign, she learned from the seniors on staff how to take a walk. So very disciplined hitter, very patient in the box, makes a pitcher bring the ball into her zone. And that's what's helped her be such a good leadoff and also a good hitter in a situation with bases loaded. Now the count's two and two. This crowd is getting into it. They do not like those strike calls down in the zone. I know that Jada Coleman did not like that pitch, but what it tells her is it's going to be called a strike. So she has to make sure the bat comes off her shoulder with anything close down in the zone. Brito at third, Snow at second, Boone at first. Alo in the on-deck circle. 2-2 Two -two to Coleman. And the UCF fans turn. <laughs> to get on the ump. Well, and I love it because that ball was definitely off the plate. Was it the same height? Yes, but you're listening to fans that are sitting down the line. They have no idea how close to the plate that was. While it is a good spot in a 2-2 count, I think that ball was off the plate enough that that should be called a ball. And it was called a ball. This is the <laughs> third full count to OU batters already today. The entire infield stands on their feet. Coleman sends it into the gap. Two run score for Oklahoma. Coleman with the big two out double. 
That was a great at bat by Jada Coleman. She was aggressive early, then patient on the balls off the plate. Then Mancha delivers one above the belt, but on the corner. A great pitch to drive. Doesn't try to do too much with it. Let's it travel. Drives it the other way. Huge hit. Her sixth double of the season. And it plates two more for the Sooners. But the problem with hitting a double with two outs is that Jocelyn Allo comes up with first base open. But when we talked to the UCF players and the pitching staff, they said, no, I, we're pitching to Jocelyn Allo. And in this situation, there is no intentional walk on. Well, let's see if they throw, if Mancha throws anything even close to the strike zone. And both Mancha and we talked about her teammate, Kama Woodall, both of them very calmly said, yeah, we're going to come in. We're, we're looking forward to throwing to Allo and the rest of them. That being said, with first base open, I would not throw to Jocelyn Allo. <laughs> no, but at the same time, look who you've got coming in behind her, Tiare Jennings, who has had two amazing campaigns in her freshman year hit. 27 home runs and this year has 24 to back it up. No sophomore slump there. Jocelyn Allo sends it long and gone. Mancha put one over the plate and Jocelyn put it over the wall. Not just over the wall, that one went over the bleachers in left center. Most of her home runs go dead center, but that one, huge blast. That was a no doubter. The outfield didn't even retreat. They simply watched it like the rest of the stands. Big home run, big blast. Number 28 on the year, and the home run queen does it again. Now sitting at 116 career home runs, this number just continues to go up. Wow. Not only the career home run leader for OU and the nation, but now Oklahoma's all-time hits leader. That was hit number 329 for the kid from Hawaii. Not too shabby for a kid who had to be given a break her freshman year because the love of the game had escaped her. She was pressing. She didn't love the game anymore. It was her sophomore year trying to put up the same numbers that she did her freshman year, and Patty Gasso actually took the game away from her for two weeks. Ever since then, you've seen that Jocelyn Allo able to hit and love the game again. So now 22 straight games with the home run for Oklahoma. Jennings comes up with nobody on and two away. And Jocelyn Allo talked about that as we see activity in the UCF bullpen. Allo said there were times during that sophomore year you talked about that she would go out and just sit in her car and cry. She had 30 home runs as a freshman, which tied the great Lauren Chamberlain, who had 30 both in her, in her first two years. But the pressure got to her, and Patty Gasso left her home and said, you know, just don't, didn't even want her to watch softball, just get away from the game. And she's, Patty said one thing that it, it taught Jocelyn was that they could win without her which is a very scary thing to realize, but it also freed her up. It didn't make her feel like the weight of the world was on her shoulders anymore and gave her a chance to love the game. So while most coaches don't have the luxury of leaving a Jocelyn Allo home for two weeks, Patty Gasso realized that that was going to pay dividends in the years to come. And boy, has it ever. 2-2 two, two count now to Jennings. Jennings takes it into right field, but playable for Schopacher. Oklahoma plates five more, three of them off the bat of the best home run hitter ever. Lots of upsets last weekend. Yeah, with Arizona or Oregon State and Stanford saw that one coming because they didn't want their seasons to end. But big upsets coming in as the non-seeded regional or non-seeded winners coming out of those regionals. Pam Ward and Jenny dalton Hill joining you from Norman, Oklahoma. OU leading UCF, the champions of the American Conference, 6-0 as we head now into the third inning. Janisha Rowe leading things off. 
Sophomore who played her freshman year last year at Florida Gulf Coast. And a nice six nothing cushion for Hope Trotwine in the circle for Oklahoma. Remember all of these Super Regionals are best two out of three. And we've seen the transfer portal be something that a lot of coaches have been going to to find quality players when it comes to Janisha Rowe. That's exactly where Coach Cindy Ball Malone found her. She said when they faced her at Florida Gulf Coast, they couldn't get her out. So when she saw her name go into the portal, that was a quick call. Well, can't beat them, join them, but Rowe leads off with the bases on balls. That's the second walk surrendered by Trotwine. Yeah, walks are something that can get Trotwine in trouble. Just her 34th walk of the season with that walk. But when you lead off an inning with a walk, I don't know that we need to go through no. the percentages of that one coming across to score. Yes, it's a very high percentage. Maybe not against Oklahoma this year, but still something to avoid. Justine Molina now in the number, number eight spot. First pitch right to Grace Lyons, and they erase Rowe over at second. Grace Lyons, as you mentioned earlier, has certainly been a, a mainstay for this program, and this year was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Unanimous first team, all Big 12, also a first team academic, all Big 12. So basically, I think if there was an award to be given out, she got it. That's right. Well, what you've seen in her career is that she came in a great defender and has learned how to be a great hitter. It's Michaela Macario, the number nine hitter, the shortstop. Lions counterpart for the UCF Knights. She is a true freshman and was the rookie of the year in the American Conference. Known to her teammates as Lala. Yeah, she's one of the quickest players on this team. She has the second most stolen bases just coming in underneath that of Johnny Chiro. So Macario with 19 stolen bases on the year ran track in high school. She ran the four by 100, the 100, and also did the long jump. Couldn't catch up with the rise. It comes down to just showing discipline. It's a pitch that starts above the belt. You know that if it starts that high, it's going to continue to rise. If you're going to not be able to be disciplined on that pitch, expect to see it again and again. Yeah, the rise has been perhaps the best pitch in Trotwine's arsenal this season and sneaks that one in for a strike. Well, and the thing that you're seeing Trotwine do is mix those speeds. That's something that she's brought into her arsenal since stepping on campus for the Sooners. One of the areas that her and Jen Rocha have worked so hard on to not just hit spots consistently, but mix her speeds. That one sneaks in there, a cool 68 miles an hour. 2-2. Two -two. Upstairs, Elam throws down, and they got her. Even on a throw that isn't quite right, Lindsay Elam back behind the dish comes away with another snab out there at second. So Tiari Jennings has to come across, get the throw, and then put the tag down on the other side of her body. Now the catchers for Oklahoma only allowed 12 stolen bases in 21 attempts. Lifted into left field, drifting over into foul territory. Brito grabs it for the final out. So the leadoff walk erased thanks to the caught stealing. There to have a great day of softball. 6-0 in favor of the Sooners. Game one of this best of three Super Regional. Grace Lyons at the plate for the second time as she leads off the third inning. Grace flew out her first time up. There's a new ballpark that they are hoping will open within the next couple of years.
groundbreaking will occur later this year, and they are hoping it will be open for the 2024 season. Yeah, it's going to be a great ballpark. It expands. It almost doubles what they have in terms of indoor space. It will have seating for 3,000. The current stadium holds just a little over 1,300. Lions sends that into the gap. Goes all the way to the wall. Lions leads off with a double. Big hit for Grace Lions. Her seventh double on the season. Nice extra base hit all the way to the wall. And this Oklahoma team is so disciplined that they don't swing for the home run, even though they have a ton of them on the season. They are able to just step in and hit what the pitcher is giving. I love that at bat by Grace Lyons going the other way. Nice little double to lead off the inning. Time. Grace Jewell, a sophomore from Chesapeake, Virginia. It's her eighth. Just had seven appearances rather last year. Now getting the work against Oklahoma. Yeah, Jewel had limited appearances last year through just 13 and a third innings with an ERA above six. So this year has lowered that ERA, but it still sits above 4.6 as she enters this game. Elam takes it high. And we asked Coach Patty Gasso, what Elam brings to this team, she said leadership, leadership, leadership. Yeah, great leader, so experienced, very calm. And that's what we've seen these super, super seniors do across the country. They're bringing that just relaxed mentality, knowing that, yes, this is their last season, but it's a bonus year with 2020 being taken away from everyone across the country. It's given seniors a chance to come back to the game in a year that the game should have already been taken away from them and an opportunity for these super seniors. Four of them everyday position players along with Trotwine to possibly win another national championship. And a 3-1 pitch. On the way from Jewel. Snuck it in there for the strike. And that's the spot that you know Jada Cody was giving to the circle to communicate, hey, this is where it's getting called. Remember, not just the circle has changed, but the complete battery has changed. So back behind the dish, Griffin has not established that zone for herself as the catcher in this game just yet. Full count. Out of the zone. So Elam joins Lions over on the base pads. This fall, Sooner Vision is coming to ESPN Plus. Over 100 live events, Sooner studio programming, and exclusive archived content. Stream one live Oklahoma football game, over 25 men's and women's basketball games, not to mention national champion gymna gymnastics and softball. Sign up now, ESPNplus.com slash OU. Well, isn't this a softball school? It's pretty much. I'm, I'm, I mean, if, if you... Watch Oklahoma sports. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. You've National got. champions. Sooner Vision. Made for you. Made no, for made for o. OU. Oh, you didn't. <laughs> Lisa Brito with a chance now to knock in some runs for the Sooners. Second team all Big 12. After coming over from Oregon. Oregon coached by former OU assistant. That's nice, floated in. 
That's the change of speed that has been an important addition to Jules' arsenal, especially when you have to be up against Oklahoma and Alyssa Brito, another one of those double-digit home run hitters. Just a bit outside. Yes. <laughs> so this Oklahoma team leading the nation in home runs. There's your top five. What is that drop down line that gets me every time? Oh. Those five hitters combined have more home runs than 287 other teams across the country. Just five hitters. Hit on the nose and a nice grab out there in left field by Bejarano. The ball gets away and now a chance after a slight base running mistake. Lions had to go to second or to third part may after Elam made an aggressive move towards second, but UCF could not complete the throws. Well, and Oklahoma is playing this as though Alyssa Brito's ball hit the ground. And that is why you saw so many miscues with Oklahoma base running. So the signal from the umpires was that the ball hit the ground. So there didn't need to be a retreat to second. Lindsay Elam recognized that she needed to take off. So there should have been an out at second because it was a force play, not a tag play. So this was definitely unique all the way around because the base runners were trying to pick up what the umpires were calling, but also execute what Patty Gasso was telling them to do. The out at second. She is out. Now I think what happened, she originally called safe because they thought it was a tag play. Then they got together and said she was out because the catch was not made in left field. So I, she was originally called safe, Jim. I agree with that. And, and she was called safe on the play originally, thinking it needed to be a tag play, but it was not a tag. It was a force play that needed to go into effect there. Because it is a force play, the ball does beat Elam to second base. The call is overturned and you see now an out with runners on the corners because of Elam's miscue over there at second. Of this Oklahoma arsenal, and a chance now with runners on the corners and one out. She pinch hits for Snow. And taking off and getting down to second, Brito. And another change at shortstop. Emerson Lee is now over at short, who we hear is hilarious. <laughs> yep, they say she's the goofball on the team that keeps the dugout light. I'm excited to see if those antics take the field with her. Yeah, we'll see if she, right now some serious business though for Lee and her teammates. Down six, nothing, two runners in scoring position for Kinsey Hansen. And I like this addition by Coach Gasso to put Hanson in a position with RBI potential, knowing that Taylor Snow more of a slap or contact hitter. The defense will be pulled in because of those runners in scoring position. So she needs a hitter that can punch it through the infield. See the numbers down for Hanson, who had a tremendous year last year. Second team All-American hit 438 with 24 home runs. Drove in 66 for the national champions. Numbers down this year, dealing with the injuries. But a great chance here. Hansen got under it. Should be deep enough to score the run from third. Row camps under it. The sack fly for Hansen sends Lions home with the seventh run. And while we always think Oklahoma hits home runs, Kinsey Hansen comes in and does her job perfectly, drives this ball deep enough to center field that there's no way that they're going to be able to get Grace Lyons advancing from third base. But a heads up play by Johnny Chereau in center field, knowing that they need to try to keep Oklahoma off of third base. A solid throw does allow Brito or does make Brito stay at second. RBI number 26 for Hansen. 
Runner at second is Brito now with two away for Jana Johns, who struck out against departed starter Gianna Mancha. And she sends that into the gap. Like the first pitch she saw, RBI double. Eight nothing Sooners. Yeah, these Sooners are showing that they can do what they need to on an outside pitch, that strike on the outside lower half of, or bottom of the plate comes in against a good hitter like Jana Johns, who has really elevated her offense since stepping on campus here for Oklahoma, came in as a great defender, but has stepped up with her offense, her eighth double of the year. Nice birthday present to give yourself, right? RBI double for Jana Johns. Now Patty Gasso gonna set up another pinch hitter. It's Grace Green. She will hit for Riley Boone here in the ninth slot. Grace Green sends it deep into left field and held on to a terrific catch. Great end of the year wrap up for them to be able to host regionals, make for the first time ever, be the first team to go to super regionals and then clean up on a lot of postseason awards within their conference. I mean, this team has been able to put into play what so many of the previous UCF teams have wanted and now they represent all of those years. Yeah, it's been a fantastic season as Oklahoma takes this eight nothing lead into the top of the fourth. Trotwine in the circle has yet to give up a hit and Denali Schopaker gets her first at bat, came in to play in the field for Volpe and stayed in the lineup. Schopaker, a senior from Bradenton, already has her master's degree and is a certified athletic trainer and already has a job lined up at UCF as a trainer to work in there with the track program next season. Great student athlete, Denali Schopaker, one of the captains this year. And a 3-1 pitch on the way. Trotwine has already given up a couple of walks. And that's a strike. A trot line and the free passes is something that she needs to shore up. She did walk in the winning run in the Big 12 tournament. So those walks definitely can hurt her. But Coach Gasso said it was in that tournament that this team learned that they don't need to press. They can out hit their opponents. They just need to play loose and free defensively behind their pitcher, no matter who it is, even if Jordy Ball is not there. Second strikeout. It perfectly placed and Trotwine able to keep it low in the zone and take advantage of a pitch that has been eating up Oklahoma now takes advantage for herself for like you said Pam her second strike out of the day great luck there at Trotwine coming over from North Texas her first year with Oklahoma and with Jordy Ball out with a sore arm Trotwine and May have had to do the bulk of the pitching the last couple of weeks Trotwine having to kind of, in some ways, learn all over again, right? Getting into this program as Cersei comes up. I've already mentioned Jen Rocha, who uh, is an alum of the University of Oklahoma, coming here and now in her fourth year after several years down at Florida. There's Jen. Yeah, was at Florida under Tim Walton. And remember, Tim Walton was an assistant on staff for Oklahoma before going over to Florida to take over that program. Jen Rocha was with him, but then when Melissa Lombardi left Oklahoma after so many years to take over the Oregon program, Coach Gasso saw a chance to bring Rocha back here to Oklahoma. And Rocha jumped on that chance being an Oklahoma kid. 
It must be great to come home. You see her calling the pitches, getting them in quickly to Elam and Trotwine. Where was that pitch? That's exactly what the crowd was asking after that as well. And it's it's the pitch that's a little bit elevated, but that that's one is a money ball. I'd be swinging at that and trying to send that one out of the park all day. 2-2 two, two now. Seen a lot of tight strike zones. Elevated ERAs all across the country. And we talked to a lot of coaches across the country as we've done games, Pam, about what is creating longer games. And they're saying the strike zone is part of it. We need to start calling a strike zone that is written in the rule book that takes it to the letters and down to the knees. Off the plate. So the full count now to Cersei, who struck out on a rise ball her first time up. Five of the 11 hitters have gone to a full count, which is rather surprising. Not line over 50 pitches now as we're in the fourth inning. She's not given up a hit yet. Lyons is a really good shortstop, so that's easy peasy for her. That may be the understatement of the year. She's <laughs> so good. I love the transfer time. I mean, the ball does not sit in her glove. And your job as a middle infielder is not to ever catch a ball. Your job is simply to use that to redirect to your throwing hand. And Grace Lyons has figured out how to do that so well. It doesn't sit in the glove. It simply gets to the throwing hand. And that transfer time, minuscule. So now two out and nobody on for Jada Cody. Terrific young talent, just a sophomore. Had a chance to visit with her yesterday. California kid who wanted to get far away for college said, we asked if any California schools were after. She said, no, they knew I wouldn't stay in. Yeah. <laughs> All of those recruiting conversations happen through your travel ball coaches. And when we asked her, so I'm sure a lot of California schools were going after you. She said, no, my travel coaches knew I wanted to go away from home. And so they told coaches right away that I didn't want to stay home and they didn't waste their time trying to come after me knowing that I didn't want to stay in California. When Coach Cindy Ball Malone came a knock and she was interested. Yeah, committed without visiting during the, the COVID time when there weren't on campus visits. And she has found a home in Orlando. And it was during that COVID time that Jada Cody developed the relationship with her pitcher, Mancha, that's why they are a battery. They always stay together. When Mancha's not in the circle, Cody goes out and plays defense in other locations. Four pitch walk to Cody. I will say, Pam, that's one of my pet peeves. When I'm playing defense, I want my pitcher to throw competitive strikes. And when you're throwing a four pitch walk, that's telling me that you're missing the zone and I need you to tighten that up. Trotwine does allow those walks to affect her at times. Defensively, I don't see anybody coming in and talking to her in the circle. Right now, just very focused on Jen Rocha in the, bowl, in the dugout calling those pitches. Here's Doherty now. Question as of whether it hit her, and the home plate umpire says, yes, it did. So now a four-pitch walk to Cody, and then Doherty gets hit. Now Jennifer Rocha comes out first to talk to the home plate ump. And right now it's just control issues for Trotwine in the circle. You've got to make sure that you are tight on the zone. You're, you have three purposes in the circle. You need to spin tight, you need to throw hard, and you need to make sure that the ball is moving, meaning it's got some spin. So spin, spot, and velocity, speed. Make sure that those three things are shored up. And right now, spots are not there. She's losing control and putting runners on. First time that UCF has had a runner at second base. They still do not have a base hit today. 
Well, and the problem is their RBI hitter is standing on second base. So while she is very good on the bases, they need her bat to be up instead of her in scoring position. Yeah, that four pitch walk, remember it was Cody, uh, uh, you know, base, uh, base is empty. Maybe being really careful with her. It's still a four pitch walk and on the hit by pitch puts two on for Ashley Griffin. True freshman who started out as a DP today, then moved to catcher after the starter Mancha was taken out. Well, this is a little bit concerning for me, Pam, because we have not seen a strike thrown in seven pitches. So it comes down to making sure that in the circle, you're filling the zone. Trust your defense. You don't need to be tight in this situation with an eight run lead. And you see the line there. She's had at least three walks and four of her last six starts. You mentioned a terrific strikeout to walk ratio coming in to this super regional, but she's been a little, a little leaky as of late. Well, and it's all about the timely walk. You don't ever want to walk a run in, and that was the win game winning run. Right into the glove of John, steps on third to end the inning. Still no hits for UCF. They stranded two when we come back. Also the head coach for Oklahoma. So Hope Trotwine is pitching a no-hitter, but some control uh, problems there. Uh, any concerns, coach? Uh, no, not really. Uh, she's in control. We're, I mean, you get a walk here and there. It's good for her to challenge herself. So we're okay. Well, and I, I love the fact that you've got these five super seniors that have been able to impact your program this year. What have they meant to you this season? Uh, they've been so fun to work with and... Uh, really have continued to take our program to new levels, good leadership, all-in mentality, and that's what we need. So they're great examples for the rest of the team. Yeah, playing very well. Three birthdays today, including yours. <laughs> uh, ha happy birthday, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> coach Gasso does not like having attention brought to herself, so we made sure to wait till yes. the end of the interview yes. to wish her the happy birthday. Yeah, okay. But Otherwise, the headphones might have gone off. They would. <laughs> shortest interview ever. Birthday girl trying to get a victory. Her team up 8 nothing. And Jocelyn Allo's going to hit in this inning. And you know what she did in her last at bat? Just a little poke. Yeah, three run, three run, little blooper. <laughs> if that's a blooper. Yeah, it's probably still traveling. Six. Make an eight nothing lead as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Pam Ward and Jenny Dalton Hill joining you on this uh, nice hot day, about 85 degrees and sunny in Norman. Another sold out crowd, just under 1,700 people in this building. Again, the new one, they're hoping to be open for the 2024 season. I don't know if 3,000 seats will be enough. No, it won't be, How? but that's what we're seeing all across the country, how popular the sport is becoming and how many fans are trying to just get in and get a taste of this amazing sport. The cool thing about it is softball, as a fan, you're able to be so close to the action. In baseball, if you sit in the outfield, you're so far removed and the backstop is so big that you are not as close to the action as you are in the game of softball. These intimate fields are so fun to sit and especially when you uh, get to watch Oklahoma play because the ball flies over your head when you yes. sit in the outfield. Yes. Angelina DeVoe, the third UCF pitcher, taking on Jada Coleman's two for two today. Single and a two-run double. Coleman now has two hits in each of Oklahoma's NCAA tournament games this year. Jocelyn Allo waiting on deck. See quite a few fans in the stands wearing Allo t-shirts. Number 78, her dad Levi was a offensive lineman in football and that was his number. That's a great strikeout for DeVoe. Time now for our Capital One rewarding performance. The last time Allo was up. Just a little poke over the left center field wall. A no doubter three run shot for Jocelyn Allo. Her 28th of the year leads the team and is the home run queen. A little souvenir out there. 
Better run quick and hide that yeah. ball. Yes. <laughs> Alo hit that home run off Gianna Mancha, who got the start. Look at those numbers. That's not even like video game numbers. That's fantasy, like I'm dreaming <laughs> that maybe I could do this one day numbers. Well, you can't, Pam. But when no. it comes to that, that's why she's drafted number one in the AU. And then Stings won the opposite way. The throw over to first, and they got her. Schopiker playing relatively shallow, able to get Alo. I tell you what, that is a right fielder's dream to get a ball sharply hit to you to come away and able to play it like an infielder. A one hopper, solid throw to first base. Alo forced out at first by Schopiker and that huge throw from right field. Great play as an outfielder. Doherty leaning that way to Make sure she got it as quickly as possible. Oklahoma has had a hit in every inning. They scored one in the first, five in the second, highlighted by the two-run double for by Coleman and Allo's home run, and then two more in the third inning. Jennings 0 for 2 has put the ball in the air twice. Jennings, just a sophomore, and set a freshman record last year. 92 RBIs. No freshman in the history of this game had ever done that. No, those RBI numbers, that's another one of those video game numbers. I mean, when you go through this lineup for Oklahoma, all you can, your jaw hits the floor watching just how many offensive statistical categories these, these Sooners are able to dominate across the country. And it starts their freshman year. That one is high since the outfielder row right to the base of the wall. Good job by DeVoe. First time that Oklahoma has been set down in order. They also are three outs away from their 38th run rule game. They have run ruled 70% of their opponents. Well, and that's one of the things that Coach Gasso has talked about that has been a deficit for them, knowing that with all of those run rule wins, their teams and their pitchers have not been able to get enough innings in the circle to feel seasoned for the end of the year. And so with Jordy Ball going down, I would have to say that this is kind of a blessing in disguise to give Trotwine and May an opportunity for more innings and the weight of the world sitting on their shoulders to advance to the Women's College World Series. Maddie Bejarano starting things off, hitting to a double play to end the second inning. Bejarano's biggest fan. Another Tanner on hand today, sitting in the sun. Quite a few UCF fans have made the trip from Orlando up here to Norman. Which you fly into Oklahoma City and it's with no traffic about 20 minutes away. It's a pleasant drive, easy. Yeah, easy highway miles. And it's one of the things that UCF trained for. They figured out how many miles it was between Orlando and Oklahoma City. Not expecting that they need to go through Norman yes. to get there for the College World Series. Yeah, Norman a little bit closer. Oklahoma City north of Norman where the World Series will get underway on Thursday. And one of the most wild NCAA tournament so far. So much parity. Five Pac-12 teams able to advance to Super Regionals. 2-2 Two -two pitch is fouled back. Including Arizona. That's right. After a really rough year, they were last in the Pac-12 at one point in the season. Finished conference play second to last, but got into the tournament by the skin of their teeth, but showed up well at regionals to push themselves to a super regional against Mississippi State. Who well, I would imagine nobody except for maybe themselves thought could go into Tallahassee and beat Florida State. I tell you what, to watch those games, that was so fun to watch Mississippi State show up. I mean, the Mia Davidson long ball coming into play and just it's been so fun watching Samantha Ricketts take over that program and take it to new heights. 
Hit into right field, handled by Boone. As we're going to get you into the studio. Here's Matt Chick. Thank you, Pam. FCC Player of the Year, KB Sides in Arkansas. One win away from their first Women's College World Series, Jen Schroeder. Yeah, she's the SEC Player of the Year. One of the most fun players to watch. One more win, they make history. Headed to OKC. Beat Texas for the first time last night. Try and do it again tonight, right after you're done, Pam. Can't wait. So much great softball still to come all weekend long. Courtney Dyfel doing an amazing job with that Arkansas program. Arizona eliminated them. Last year in the Super Regional, this year is uh, Matt and Jen talked about. Jenny Ritter in there as well in the studio. They're one win away from a World Series. Janice Chiro, who made a nice catch out in center in the last inning, up now for UCF. Trying to get their first hit. This is a team that hit 300 during the regular season, 15th in the nation, and on base percentage. And they have been blanked by Trotwine, who has three walks and also has hit a batter. Well, and the reason this UCF team has been able to advance so far is because of the schedule that head coach Cindy Ball Malone was able to put together this year. She knew that it would be either a blessing or a curse because she scheduled so hard before conference play, wanted to go in and play in the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational, came away with some wins there against some great teams, but have 12 games this year against, had 12 games against ranked opponents very difficult schedule and then going into regionals hosting at home beat Villanova and Michigan twice to be able to go to their first ever super regional here at Oklahoma. One two to row. Yeah that early schedule look at the teams Georgia then there was a stretch Michigan they played who they, as you just mentioned, they eliminated in the regional, and then in a row, three in a row, Tennessee, Texas, and Florida State. And they didn't come away with wins in many of those ranked opponent games. They came away with losses, but they came away with lessons learned that have pushed them in the postseason. Chance for Johns to away. And I like the fact that Johnisha Rowe used the ground in that one. So many slappers for UCF have been trying to elevate the ball over the infield. But on that slap, a hard slap needs to be pushed and dri driven dr straight into the ground. That one had too low of a barrel angle. She has to create a higher bounce to be able to get down the line and use those wheels. And now the fans on their feet. Justine Molina. Trying to get the first hit for this UCF team. That's a foul ball. Trotwine, the North Texas transfer, trying to nail down the no-hitter. It's a ball game. Jennings squeezes it in her glove. Oklahoma wins 8-0. And Hope Trotwine with her second solo no-hitter this season. The pitching staff for Oklahoma has now thrown eight no-hitters this year. That is the 32nd shutout of the season. The pitching staff for Oklahoma sits atop the leaderboard with that ERA. I mean, it's just so hard to beat Oklahoma with the kind of pitch pitchers that they've got in the circle, but then you got to face their bats. We saw another Jocelyn home run in this one today. Huge home run, another run rule win for Oklahoma. 38th run rule victory of the year for Oklahoma. Their 53rd victory. They are one win away from going back to the Women's College World Series. The Knights will be playing for their season tomorrow. And the 